so, I mean, what's the story? I mean, you got a guy or? Yes, three big ones and they left went blood. Her name is Samantha Baker and today is her 16th birthday. She's gotten her boobies. Oh, <laughs> I'd better go get my magnifying glass. They forgot my birthday. Classic. This is the single worst day of my entire life. Universal Pictures presents... <laughs> Score, a direct hit. 16 Candles. You say it's your birthday. It's my mother too. The story of a girl who's stuck with a guy who's driving her crazy. Nice manner, babe. And stuck on a guy she's crazy about. Who's Jake? Jake Ryan? Jake's my boy. Jake is a senior, and he's beautiful and perfect. He doesn't even know you exist. He smiles at me, and I don't say anything. I can't believe I'm such a jerk. You quit feeling sorry for yourself. It's bad for your complexion. You know Samantha Baker? Kids are looking at me a lot. It's kind of cool the way she's always looking at me. Maybe she's retarded. What's happening, the hot stuff? His name is Long Duck Dong. Nothing could shock me anymore. Underpants. Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? Girls underpants. <laughs> Hate that rock and roll rubbish. Everybody in this family has just gone totally at her limits. You guys, you just gotta be cool. You just gotta chill out and just be cool. Just watch me. Why, you <laughs> little scuzzbag. I'll let you take Carolyn home. She's so blitz, she won't know the difference. Jake, I don't have a car. You can take mine. Before anything else terrible happens. She's stuck between a half-wit. Very hot, very hot. And a heartbreaker. I want a serious girlfriend. Somebody I can love. It's gonna love me back. Pretty intense, huh? Over. Everyone she knows is either on her case. You know you're the one I want to buy, huh? Or out of their tree. Monday! It only happens once in a lifetime. This has got to be a joke. And once is enough. Happy birthday, Samantha. This is getting good. 16 Candles. Hello? Hey, Scott. Hey, Dave. Hey. Hey, you there? Yeah, it looks like we got everybody on. Thank you, David, for being patient. Oh, cool. Okay, good. Just uh, Scott and Rose, so you know, uh, David is uh, hes in a restaurant, but he's doing his best to try to be away from the noise, so we'll hear some background noise, but it'll be, it yeah. should be okay. Yeah, just like, let me know if for any reason something gets loud, if you want me to start over again, if you get like some people coming down the hallway, then, you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, if, if something was like, had, I, I don't anticipate, but I mean, if you suddenly, music gets a little loud, like, hey, let's start that again, you know, uh, that's fine, but hopefully this isn't too bad. I mean, I don't know if you're just maybe picking up the background music. So, well, I, I mean, I, I got a little bit of the uh, the music uh, before, but it, like I said, it wasn't horrible. So I think we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah it doesn't but, sound too yeah. bad on my end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, com I'm completely away from the actual seating area of the restaurant. I'm down this very long hallway as far as I can get. So <laughs> we, we, oh, we, really, we really appreciate you doing that for us. I, j I just wish that they would stop like sorting silverware uh <laughs> <laughs> all right okay we get it yeah we get it we're in a restaurant <laughs> yeah okay so so yeah so go ahead go ahead for the moments give me sight beyond sight greetings starfighter you have been recruited by the star league to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80's Reboot Overdrive Podcast.
Oh my god. That is like so dated. Alright, so this is 80s Reboot Overdrive and I am Dave. Online I've got 80s Musical Rose. Hey everybody. And 80s Auto Reverse Scott. Hey, great to be back. And we have special guest David Blanchard. Welcome to the show, David. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, we are doing fantastic. We appreciate you joining us. So David is joining us because he is an event coordinator for this awesome event that's going to give me bragging rights to hold over Scott's face because yeah. Scott always brags about you know how great Florida is because he used to live in Chicago. But now I've got this awesome event called the Shermer Club that's coming to Chicago, and that's all thanks to special guest David Blanchard. David, we briefly talked on the phone. You mentioned that you only do events that you're really passionate about. How did this get started for you? First of all, we started doing Ferris Fest last year. You know, the that idea came about when I was sitting in front of my computer a year ago this past October, and I just had been thinking about the fact that, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is such a huge, beloved film around the globe, and, uh, you know, 2016 was coming up, obviously the third anniversary of the movie. And I was just kind of amazed that, you know, it seemed as though nobody was really doing anything to acknowledge this movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, and certainly, you know, favorite movie of, of, of many people around the planet. And uh, it just seemed like nobody was really doing anything, and I just kind of sat there one day in front of the computer, and I'm like, well, why don't I do something? You know, and then, you yeah. know, time passes, and, and it became this huge viral Chicago event. Uh, but even long before that, I'd probably say it was four or five years before Ferris Fest, I was thinking to myself, you know, I'd been going to some readings of John Hughes movies in, uh, in L.A., and, you know, we see they kind of do on a semi-regular basis. And uh, I was just kind of surprised that, again, you know, that was even four or five years before before Ferris Fest that I was thinking to myself, you know, nobody is, there's no big major event anywhere yeah. on the planet in acknowledgement of John Hughes. You have, you know, there's so many things, uh, movies, TV, music, uh, pop culture happenings, you know, there's so much stuff that's acknowledged through celebrations or events or or uh, film festivals or what have you, and there really was nothing being offered in honor of John Hughes, and and that was kind of a frustration because obviously there's so many people that love uh, his his writing, his movies, the characters that he created, uh, the movies that uh, are just such a part of um, uh, a part of uh, you know film history, if you will, aside from the fact that they're beloved by so many people, and uh, so you know that that once Ferris does became this huge hit and we were ramping up to it, I thought you know. You really should try and do something that encompasses all of John Hughes' 1980s teen films. Um, so we even made an announcement at uh, Ferris Fest during the screening right before then saying, you know, we're thinking about doing this, this Hughes Fest uh, in 2017. And a lot of people uh, reacted. Uh, you know, there were big cheers. A lot of people reacted uh, very positively. They were like, oh, my God, nobody's ever done anything like this. And I'm like, I know. We should do it. Yeah, this, uh, this was – it's exciting to see you guys putting this stuff together. I was still living in Chicago at the time when the 25th anniversary came around and they did I heard that they did a showing of the of the movie at Wrigley Field and I was crushed that I had missed it. Uh I didn't hear, you know, I didn't hear about it in time to be able to uh arrange to get there. And I would have loved to have gone to something like that and that just seems like the stepping stone for what you guys have taken it to the next level and just really taking care of uh, John Hughes and all of his all of the stuff I mean, he defines our generation if you're growing up in the 80s as a teenager it he he was able to really nail down everything that we that we experienced so it's 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 cool that you guys are putting this together and I'm really bummed that you know after I moved to Florida not only am I gonna miss Shermer the Shermer Club and Ferris fest last year I miss the Cubs winning the World Series. You know, so uh, I, I feel like as soon as I move to Florida, everything's happening in Chicago now. I'm like, I, you know, wait until uh, you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know, at the same time, I do love the weather, so can't complain too much. Yeah, well, that, uh, that's true. That's that's kind of a good handoff. You know, the weather. Yeah. I mean, when I when I was in Chicago, I mean, I've been, I've been to Chicago certainly a number of times before last May's Ferris Bueller event, but you know, in ramping up to to uh, what we were doing last year. I spend so much time in Chicago, and after a while, I'm like, you know, I'm just sitting downtown having dinner one night. I'm like, yeah, I could totally move here. I love 
Chicago, and I loved Chicago for a long time. And friends of mine there and people I met were like, yeah, you love it now, it's May, but come back in uh, you know, January and February. Don't, in, in fact, don't come back then because you, you won't want to move. <laughs> They're like, don't, don't be here in the winter. Just forget that. I'm like, well, yeah, now I know. Because, I mean, I, I grew up in upstate New York, so, I mean, I know what it's like about the snow and the ice and the below zero and all that, so. But, so, David, what the the event isn't just, like, movie screens. I mean, you also get to interact with, like, the stars. You know, what other kind of fun stuff, do, you know, is, do you have planned for the event? We also have, aside from the screenings that we're doing with uh, a lot of the cast members from from a number of these films. We're also doing this immersive uh, location bus tour. It's going to be six or seven buses are going to be going on this uh, citywide and North Shore wide tour uh, of mm-hmm. many of the filming locations, actually pretty much all of the filming locations in the Chicago area for, for all wow. of the teen movies that were actually shot there. Um, with the exception, of course, of Pretty in Pink and some kind of wonderful because those were filmed in California. So that'll bring us from the North Shore all the way down to downtown Chicago, um, you know, going to um, the Art Institute of Chicago and uh, going, uh, you know, the school where Ferris Bueller picks up Sloan and uh, going to the church uh, from 16 Candles, which is actually going to be um, the climactic event of the weekend is going to be this very large scale uh, immersive recreation of the of the church sequence from the end of 16 Candles. Uh, we're talking about everything that happens outside of the church from the point where Samantha Baker's sister comes out of the church. She's still feeling the effects of you know the muscle relaxants and they're throwing the rice at her. She gets in the car with uh, Rudy and they drive off and then Molly Ringwald, Samantha Baker, comes out of the church and, uh, and sees Jay Bryan for the first time uh, and they actually have a proper meeting uh, all the way through the end of the movie. So we're gonna be doing that entire sequence live with a full cast and uh, we intend to make it absolutely as accurate as possible per what you saw in the film as far as clothing and you know the various uh, wedding guests and cars oh. and, you know we're going to be having jay Bryan. we have a, a car collector who has the same exact make and model and mm. color of the car that uh, jake jake ryan drove uh, and we're going to be of course we're going to be having actors portraying Molly Ringwald's character, Jake Ryan, uh, and and others. So that's going to be the that's that's a big part of this event is um, this sort of immersive tour of all these filming locations that will also include scene recreations um, from the various films that we stop at the locations of. That sounds awesome. That does sound very impressive. Actually, I have a friend, a good friend of mine um, up north. ZD Smith that I used to work with. He uh, went to Ferris Fest last year and he was posting all kinds of pictures online. Oh, nice. And it, and the whole thing looks just like he got a picture with Edie. Um, um, I'm sorry. I'm, Edie McClure. Thank you. McClure. I knew it was a mix something. I dropped my name. Right. <laughs> he got a picture with her and yeah, he was just raving about how much fun he had at that event. So I'm sure this, your, your next event is just going to be, uh, off the wall, man. It's going to be great. And I'm really June. I might have to make a trip up to Chicago. I'm going to see what I can, if I can talk the wife into it. Well, she's a huge, huge Hughes fan too. When he passed, we were crushed, you know, it was like a, an icon of our, uh, of our generation for sure. So, Oh uh, yeah. I might, I might go ahead. You got to come out. You got to come out for this thing because it's, it's definitely going to be bigger. I mean, you saw what we did at Ferris Fest. Yeah. Um, this is definitely going to be uh, a bigger event, in part because you know we're not just doing one movie; we're doing six films now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, so David, I got to ask: out of those movies, which one is your favorite? Now, see, that's a really tough choice because uh, you know I really love all of them in one way or another. I, I probably have to say the the biggest argument that I have with people is, you know, there's some people who like Pretty in Pink more than some kind of Wonderful, and I say that. The connection there is made because, you know, as you know, uh, Pretty in Pink, John Hughes turned the reins over to Howard Deutsch uh, to direct Pretty in Pink. And, uh, you know, the reaction to that from from uh, preview audiences was that they didn't like the fact that Molly Ringwald's character ended up with Ducky at the end. So they went back and they reshot it where she ended up with Blaine. That aside, um, you know, there's a lot of people. I mean, Pretty in Pink certainly has a, a more higher profile 
uh, with the fans. Fans really love Ducky, and they, you know, just uh, Printing Ping has, again, it's, it's sort of much more on the radar than Some Kind of Wonderful, but the thing is, I actually like Some Kind of Wonderful more than Pretty in Pink. It just, the story just resonates more with me, and, um, yeah, you know, I think it's just a better choice. Uh, myself and what happens at the end of the film because, um, you know, Pretty in Pink, it's, I always felt with Pretty in Pink that, okay, would Molly Ringwald end up with Ducky or would she end up with uh, Blaine? Well, I think she probably shouldn't have ended up with either one of them and she probably should have just kept looking <laughs> because, you know, Ducky's great, you know, and Blaine was kind of a jerk throughout the movie. It's like, why would she want to go back with him? I just think, you know, and Ducky is still kind of her you know, her best friend, but he's still a little out there, even though we all love him, but it just seems like she should have just said, you know, I think I'm just going to hang and just, well, let's see what happens with the next guy that comes along. Yeah. But then, I know that didn't quite answer your question, what's my favorite? Um, yeah, it's really hard to say what's uh, which ones are my, my favorite. I mean, I love Ferris Bueller. I love The Breakfast Club. I love Sixteen Candles. You know, those. I think probably those are my my tops out of all of them, but I mean, I still love Pretty in Pink, some kind of wonderful, weird science. Uh, really such an out there film for Hughes to do immediately after The Breakfast Club. You know, that was only like, what, six months later that came out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're talking about a left turn from what you just did with, with Breakfast Club, but it's still like a really fun, fun movie. These are all, I mean, all six of these are great movies and, you know, plus all of his other work that he did. I mean, oh, yeah. so many things. Oh, I was just say, we, we definitely want to make this an annual event, and I know when we move past this one, I'm sure that we're going to be adding more of Hughes films, you know, quite possibly breaking it into his work in general, going to, you know, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and even mm -hmm. She's Having a Baby, which 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 mm -hmm. I love that movie. That's one of Hughes films that I really enjoy, is She's Having a Baby, uh, that did... It did okay when it came out in theaters, but it didn't do phenomenal. But yeah, that and you know some of other some of uh, Hughes' other work that was uh, based in the Chicago area. Uh, I'm sure that when we get into the following year, uh, that we'll probably kind of broaden the net a little bit and, and honor those films too. But of course, this year we're just doing the 16 films. Yay, Andrew McCarthy! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, I would come strictly just to see him. <laughs> He's pretty awesome. Although I always thought, you know, because I like how you said you didn't think uh, Molly Ringwald's character, you know, needed to be with either one of the two that were available to her. I always thought, you know, she was the perfect choice for James Spader's character. But that was like a secret <laughs> that I kept for most people. Because <laughs> he was supposed to be the bad guy, you know. But he That's liked her, too. I mean, That's pretty good. he liked her, too. And it was just like, honestly, I think they had that like Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn kind of a thing going on, you know, it was just like, she was always so snotty to him and he was snotty right back. And it was just like, I was, I honestly wanted the two of them to like kiss like once, but you know, I guess it wasn't going to happen, but that's just me. Um, yeah, that would have been a shocker alternate ending that she just said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Steph. And there have been the two yeah. guys who just look yeah, at each other with the rest and you guys. drop jaws, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But um, I like the fact that it's called the Shermer Club because I just recently watched uh, Dogma. And there was a scene in there, if you're all familiar with the movie, where Jay and yes. Tom and Bob were talking yeah, about the scene of the Shermer in Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they're looking for Shermer, Illinois, and this guy, John Hughes, and they actually have all these, you know, movies, and then they come to find out that it doesn't even exist, you know. Yeah. And it's just like, it doesn't? Really? You're right. <laughs> it doesn't That's so really convincing. Exist. Yeah. And I, I loved, and, and you certainly I won't, you know, use the language that uh, that Jay used in that scene, no. which first makes it that much hilarious. But, mm. you know, I love when he was just like, you know, the it seemed like, you know, the girls are this, and the guys are that. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. It was just a total put down to the guys and the girls, and he said, except for Judd Nelson, he was harsh. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that too. That was yeah. great. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's such a great scene. He's like, yeah, I never, I never knew. He's like, we, we looked for this place. You know what? It doesn't even exist. So, <laughs> such a great scene. And of course, you know, Kevin Smith, humongous John Hughes fan. Yeah. We, we even. We even asked him to uh, come to the event last year. We uh, yeah. we reached out to Kevin Smith. We wanted to become, maybe even do like um, 
you know, one of the uh, one of the Q and A's is he had two screenings of Ferris Bueller, and uh, and you know, I, it sounded as though that he wanted to make it, but just the schedule was just booked up, and I, I knew we'd kind of call him a little bit too late, but uh, that that would have been crazy. That would have it would have been awesome, and he would have done a great job on a Q and A because oh, he yeah. knows like everything, literally knows everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure he does absolutely. So that would have been nuts. All right, so it's uh, the Shermer Club. Uh, so people can find it going to Shermer Club, the Shermer Club dot com, uh, and it's in Chicago, Illinois, June twenty second through the twenty fifth. And so, is there any other information you want to give about the event, David? Something that we're we're still doing. I mean, you saw the lineup on there, and you know, every, everybody's very excited about all the guests that we have. I got to say that the minute that we signed in McCarthy. Uh, the interest uh, level on uh, Instagram and, and Twitter, social media. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, now I got to go to this thing. They're like, what? No, I'm getting my tickets right now. People were just kind of, you know, they were really excited about uh, about uh, when we signed Andrew McCarthy. That, 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 just, that just brought everything like just that much more to the next level. So, um, you know, we have more stars that we're going after. We're not stopping. There's other people, you know, yeah. mentioning names right now. We've got a couple of of, uh, of big stars from these movies that we are talking to right now. We're hoping to uh, sign them. We're still kind of working out. We're still in negotiations. And, you know, keep watching the website and social media as soon as we have something, we're going to announce it. But, yeah, we've got, there's more people on the way. And, actually, we've got a, uh, a very prominent who I can't say yet, but uh, you'll see some news on the website and, and also social media uh, soon. We've got a, a major 80s band who John Hughes... Uh, used several of their songs uh, <gasps> from in uh, in a few of his films. That uh, they're going to be doing a concert um, on Thursday evening, June twenty second. That's going to be sort of our opening event. Um, and oh, and also I can tell you, even though I can't tell you the name of that band yet, trust me, they're big. Um, can we but guess? Opening for them is going to be Sixteen Candles, the uh, Chicago-based band. Oh, they yep. are awesome. Please. They're pretty they good. Are yeah, great. They're amazing. Candles, um, they were very excited. Uh, they really wanted to come to Ferris Fest last year. Unfortunately, we didn't. We didn't connect up, and I, I reached out to them, and they said, "Yeah, we absolutely, we absolutely want to do this." So, so they're on board, um, and uh, you know, we're just waiting to officially announce them when we get the the uh, official okay to announce the other band who we have signed. The uh, again, the uh, the big '80s band I've been talking about. So yeah, there's a lot more that we're going to be here. To soon and uh, you know, we're, You're we killing get some Rose. more surprises we get some more surprises that we're going to be uh, pulling out of our slave shortly mm-hmm. so yeah so keep an eye out for that stuff it's going to be it's going to be pretty awesome that's cool i'm guessing you'll be announcing that on on twitter or facebook or something along those yeah, lines we're going to be announcing it okay. on our uh, uh, facebook page instagram twitter uh, everything. Okay. Our official website, everything. Uh, the moment we know anything, we uh, we roll it right out. Usually, with the with the cast members that we sign, what we've been doing on uh, social media is we get a, a, a take a screen grab from one of the movies, something that's like incredibly obscure from whatever movie that they were in, and just post that screen grab as kind of a teaser. And we've actually had a lot of people saying, "Oh man, I'm going through the movie right now and I can't find that shot." You know, because people are like they're, they're trying to make a point of of uh, of, you know, trying to go after, like, trying to figure out who it is before we announce them, like, the next day or two days later. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people have guessed, some people we've stumped. But that's kind of something that, that, that we like to do. So, yeah, we'll we'll put some hints up as to who's coming before we make the announcement to kind of um, tease everybody first. So. Dave, I bet you can't wait to see Amanda Jones, too, huh? Amanda yeah. Jones, yeah, that's, that's going to be pretty <laughs> cool. I, I've actually met Leah Thompson previously, and she's really... Very personable. She's very friendly. I'm so glad that she's going to be joining us. And of course, um, this is going to be the first time since some kind of wonderful was released that she and Craig Sheffer are actually going to be together at a public event. Wow. So, um, uh, that's that's going to be interesting. Of course, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, he was the bully right. boyfriend and Hardy Jens and some kind of wonderful. Uh, and um, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting to see the two of them up there doing the Q and A and and uh, having to meet the fans and everything. A lot of people are are excited about both of them being there and about them being together for the first time uh, in um, 30 years, actually, because this year is the 30th anniversary of Some Kind of Wonderful. So we're actually turning that screening into a 30th anniversary event, by the way. Nice. So, yeah. 
And, and, and much like you guys were talking about for Pretty in, uh, Pretty in Pink, I've got the same kind of discussion for some kind of wonderful. I think Amanda Jones should have ended up with Keith. It's, yeah. it's a tough call because I, I mean, I love, I love Watts. I had this big crush on Watts when that movie came out. So I'm like, we're, you know, we, we, we contacted Mary Stuart Masterson and, and we're still kind of talking to her a bit. And I really would love to see her uh, come to this just for, for, from my own personal favorite character of Watts. I love Watts. Yeah, I had a huge crush on her too. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. You can't beat Amanda Jones. I know. Come on. No, come on. No, Dave. <laughs> Dave and I have had this argument several times. <laughs> I like Watts. He liked Amanda Jones. So yeah, I, I'm with yeah. you on that one, David. Yeah, Amanda <laughs> Jones. I mean, she's great. She's cool. You know, I, 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 I do. I, I dig her. But, but Watts is just like I just. She's just got that style. She's got the personality. She's just, just like the whole package, you know. She sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and those are two random people walking by. So, well. <laughs> and they, they agreed. Um, they agreed to the watch. And they agreed, yeah. 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 So Watts is just, uh, yeah. She's she, Watts is probably like my absolute favorite. Well, not my absolute favorite. Watts has to be one of my absolute favorite characters from from any job you saw. Oh wow, cool! Definitely not. Not I, I can't say my absolute favorite, but I mean absolutely top, top on the on the top list. Uh, she's one of my absolute favorites. So I, yeah, so I I I was totally cool with uh, with Keith getting together with her at the end of the movie. Uh, I would but, say of all the girls, she was my favorite for sure. I had the, like yeah. I had the biggest crush on her of all the girls of all the teen movies and all that. I think Watts was probably at the top of my list. Yeah. Something about her. I don't know what it is. It was some kind of wonderful. Not sure. <laughs> right. There you go. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I had to throw that out Whoa. there. Oh, <laughs> you gosh. totally nailed that. That was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, while, while you're talking about it, you guys think about, like, okay, what are the other – trying to think of, like, oh, the other, the other girls in John Hughes movies – uh, you know, I mean, that, that's something that we could have at the event is kind of a, um, you know, what are your favorite guys in the John Hughes films? What are your favorite girls? You know, yeah, yeah. just looking at everything. Yeah, I'd probably just say, what's what's my favorite girl in the John Hughes movie? I, it's Watts. Yeah. It has to be Watts. If you narrow it down to to sex, male, female, it, it has to be Watts. And then, I don't know, who's after that? Maybe like, you know, Sloan. Sloan, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a crush on her too. She was cute. Sloan, yeah, for sure. I can't but believe you know, but I can't believe you guys haven't even brought up Kelly LeBrock yet. Now I was waiting well, for that yeah, one because that was the ultimate girl there. Right. Yeah. Some, See, you know. the, yeah, Kelly LeBrock is great, but she's kind of like one of those unattainable women. You know? yeah, I agree. Yeah. All you yeah, gotta do is get your computer about, like, out. Women who, you know, the girls that <laughs> the, the girls that it was possible to like actually attain. When you were that age. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. Yeah. I don't know. I liked Allie yeah. Sheedy in The Breakfast Club. I've yes, always Allie liked Sheedy in The Breakfast yeah. Club. Yes, Allie Sheedy yeah. in The Breakfast Club. She's definitely on my list, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I still I, – I agree that Allie Sheedy is a close – she would be – she was an interesting character for sure. Um, but Watts is still – I, I got to say, I think Watts is the one. Yeah, there was – Something about her. She's just so cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Her her she's, attitude, and then I think I, you know, she's I was, got that edge to her. Exactly. I was mm -hmm. I was in the rock and roll crowd, you know, the heavy metal group, and not not a group, but you know, the heavy metal crowd. And I think of all the girls, I think she would have fit most into that little crowd, you know, especially being a drummer. She was cool. She's a musician too. I mean, that's cool stuff. Great character. Right. Exactly. And and she nailed it too as as uh the character. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Believable. Absolutely. There was totally like, believable. There was just yes, yeah, so there was just there was a lot going on with Watts and I think that that's mm. part of the reason why you appreciate her. She wasn't like sort of a peripheral character. She you know, there was like there was there was style and there was character and there was uh emotion and you know, there was a lot mm -hmm. of depth there. There was a lot going on with Watts. Some people said, yeah, I had somebody say to me at one point, it's like, could you imagine what would happen if, like, you know, you have two characters that are very, I don't want to say over the top, but I mean, incredibly stylish in, in two John Hughes films that are basically sort of the, the reverse, 
uh, reverse gender, pretty pink, some kind of wonderful. People were like, can yeah. you imagine what would happen if Ducky and Watts got together? It's like, no, I think Watts would kill Ducky because she'd just get fed up. I was going to say that. She would beat him senseless. Oh, yeah, she would. Right. With her drumsticks. <laughs> but, exactly. but when you think about it, Ducky is like a male version of Watts, except he's not. He right. doesn't have... He's, He's got a lot going on. He's got a lot of layers. You know, you can tell that there's, you know, emotionally some stuff going on. He just doesn't have that hardness that she has. And that's what makes her kind of scary. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what makes her kind of scary? Her hardness. The toughness. Oh, hardness. Yeah. yeah. She's got that hardness about her. Maybe, maybe you might see her hanging out with John Bender a little bit. That, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. She, like they would be she, like best friends. Yeah, she she'd be in the Bender crowd, you know. Definitely. Yeah, some I some I consider and some I don't. She'd be in the consider category, you know. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So there you go. So see, it's like we all love. Okay, well, most of us love Watts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I didn't say I hate her. Yeah. I just said I prefer Amanda. <laughs> That's <it>. all. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> So you guys just, I, I, you guys are gonna have a blast doing this thing, and I'm really gonna look into uh, coming up again because we we were up there last July. We are we're probably due to go visit the family and do a few things there, but I'm gonna see if I can arrange it around this weekend so we can get to this thing. Uh, hopefully, there will still be tickets available. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, tickets ticket sales have been going really well right now, um, and uh, particularly since we got into, uh, you know, five major media outlets in the Chicago area, including, you know, NBC5 and Time Out Chicago, Chicagoist, uh, Chicago Reader. We were in uh, Consequences of Sound. Consequence of Sound. And, uh, yeah, the, the, since the word's been spreading in the media, ticket sales have, uh, have really skyrocketed. So I would say the sooner that you get them, the better. Because mm. a lot of people are just waking up and saying, oh, my God, this thing is actually going on. There's something here. <laughs> For John Hughes, you know, we never, we've never seen anything like this, so which we're very, you know, we're very happy about because this, this is, you know, this is our passion is, in part, is is John Hughes and his uh, mm-hmm. and his and his films and his work and these team films That's that he amazing. gave to all of us, and you know, we want to be able to share this with all of the fans uh, yeah. and let as many people as possible know what we're doing. Who, uh, you know, we're sure will just do whatever they need to do to to get to Chicago and and. Uh, you know, and join in with everybody and, and have a fantastic time. Yeah, I know that friend of mine that I mentioned earlier, he's going. He already knows about it, and he's going. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, he'll be there. I think he'll probably do the full three days like he did last for the uh, Ferris Fest. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, well, he's a, he's he's kind of in the in the like the film industry too, so he just he's he just totally loves to geek out with all the stuff like like all of us, you know. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. And it's and and of course this is a, well, oh, this is four days by the way we added a day. Oh, is last, it really? Last year, oh, oh, it's yeah, Thursday last, too. Last year, was, last year was three days. It was Friday through Sunday. This is Thursday through Sunday. So we added an additional day, and we nice. had to with all the stuff we're doing, and then, then you know six films as opposed to one. You know there was just a lot more to this, and we knew we needed to to, uh, to push it out. So we did. Yeah, apparently my math skills got lost somewhere in there. I didn't realize 22 through 25th was actually four days. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot to carry the one on uh, take my shoes off and count. Yeah. So um, Later in the year, you're also doing A League of Their Own too, right? Uh, Yeah, we're actually uh, doing this event. uh, We we took a long time trying to pick out the name for and it's called No Crying in Baseball a 25th anniversary celebration is going to be happening at uh, Bossy Field. Uh, that's spelled B-O-S-S-E. Bossy Field in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, that's going to be happening on September 23rd and 24th of this year. And, of course, you know, as the title implies, it's the 25th anniversary celebration of the movie League of Their Own. And uh, also with that, we're going after uh, all of the stars of the film. We've gone all the way up to uh, Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, uh, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, you know, we, and we actually, oh, and, by, and there's another thing is we have signed two of the, uh, two of the women players so far, uh, Megan Cavanaugh and Ann Cusack. Ann Cusack played, um, uh, Shirley Baker, the girl who couldn't, who couldn't read when they were, when they had the list up, the, the list yeah. up, of, here's all the girls that, that made the team. 
and uh, yeah. she uh, she kind of breaks down and cries because she can't read. Her character can't read. Um, and of course, Megan Kavanaugh played uh, Marla Hooch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've signed it to them so far. We're right. going to be uh, announcing that they're going to be at the music too. We're going to be announcing that they'll be at the event uh, probably sometime in the coming week. Um, and that's that's coming together really well. And of course, Bossy Field is where the uh, World Series sequences were shot. Uh, for the end of the film, so we felt that that was a really appropriate place to uh, to hold this, because of course these events are all about going to the actual locations and, mm-hmm. and sort of immersing yourself in. You're kind of stepping into the film, or you're stepping in this case, you're sort of stepping into the uh, the time period uh, of the 1940s uh, and early 50s when when this all happened for real, because of course the movie was based on a true story. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give your uh, like your social media credentials uh, if people wanted to keep track of like future events that you have going on? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So it probably you should do both of them, I would think. So yeah, so uh, the Shermer Club, a uh, John Hughes Fest. Uh, the web address for that is www.theshermerclub.com. Uh, so go there and check out all the details of the event, including the full schedule, uh, who the guests are that. Uh, we're going to be joining us, as well as how you can buy tickets. And for the event that we're doing in September for League of Rome, the 25th anniversary, uh, that website is www.nocryinginbaseball25.com. 25 as in 25. Nice. Very awesome. Cool. Yeah. More information on there about uh, that event as we, as we get closer. Of course, that's a little bit farther away, but you know, we have some information on there now, but uh, I know what the stars that we just signed and you know we've got some things that are coming together and, and bringing the uh the AAGPBL uh baseball organization they're coming on board so of course that was you know the original organization that uh, that uh of the, the women players in the 1940s they're going to be joining us so it's gonna be a lot of fun what about a like a twitter is there a twitter uh oh, yeah the, that we can um, follow the, the company that's putting it this on, which is actually my company that I started uh, about a year ago, is called Filmed Here. Uh, and on Twitter, it's um, uh, at filmed underscore here. Uh, the same thing, uh, Instagram is filmed underscore here. Excellent. And then the uh, face, Facebook page is uh, filmed here, no underscore, no dash, no nothing. Cool. Looking you up right now and going to follow. Yeah, we wanted to, <laughs> we wanted to make everything uniform. We started the Facebook page first, and it's like, okay, film here, we could grab that. Then we got into Instagram and Twitter, and it's like, oh, no, somebody else grabbed film here, so we had to have that underscore there to make us unique. So. David, well, we really appreciate your time and uh, sharing everything about the event. I know I'm excited to live in Chicago. Ha, 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 Scott. Hey, uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I swear. Well, I, I, uh, I really don't get a lot of opportunities to rub stuff into him. <laughs> So, you know, you know it's funny. I, can I, get it, I will take yeah, it. I didn't join your podcast until I moved down here either. You know, it's just True. It's all ti- it's just timing. So, yeah, hey David, David, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the show. I, was, I, I had a blast talking to you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we were able to make this happen and thanks so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for keeping the fire alive as far as, yes. you know, John Hughes and the nostalgia that encompasses who he is. So. Well said, Rose. <laughs> Very well said. Yeah, and it's, it's and, and absolutely, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm just I'm glad that we're creating a place for John Hughes fans to to finally be able to come together, you know, in mass and, and enjoy and be able to, to share the passion for Hughes wow. team films. Awesome. With that, everybody have a uh, a great night and uh, thank you for living the '80s with us. Good night. Good night. Absolutely. Good night. Take care. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s.